What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Michael. Black insurance broker. Reaching out to y'all real quick, man. I wanted to put a little info up on here real quick. Just a couple little nuggets of knowledge for you guys. Um, just a little quick little backstory. I am a licensed life and health ins um, agent. Life insurance, health insurance, licensed agent in North Carolina. So the perspective that I give you is going to be from a black individual doing life and health insurance in North Carolina. In the South, but even more specifically North Carolina. Okay, um, I was speaking, uh, I have a, my own agency, um, LIA, Lemon Insurance Agency. Um, you know, like I said, we specialize in life insurance and in health insurance. Specifically life insurance, um, term I do, I really like final expense insurance. It's kind of my little niche. I love old people. I love dealing with them. Um, it's, a ample, it's a simple process, non-medical um, type insurance policies. Very, very simple. Pay is quick. Pay is good. I love it. So if you don't do that, check it out. Final expense with the old people. Hey, it's really, really nice. Or senior. Sorry, my, 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 my senior population. So um, I had one of my agents, you know, that I work with. Um, you know, brought him on board. He's with another agency. Um, you know, we have really good um, comp rates and starting rates. Um, if anybody out there, if you're not, if you just started or if you've been in the industry for a minute and you're not at bare minimum 80% contract level, please leave a message down below and we'll get you with someone where you can bare minimum start out at 80%. Anything below that, man, they're robbing you. You're the one that's driving. You're the one that's driving all over the state. You're seeing these people. You're taking these no's to the face. You should be compensated for it, right? Exactly. All right. So, um, black gentleman, African American gentleman, um, you know, he asked me, you know, some of the tips. He's just now getting started, just got his license. Asked me some of the tips, you know, what I thought that he needed to do to be successful within the life insurance um, industry. Um, because a lot of people, you know, don't make it their first year. But if you do make it, you know, it's really, really lucrative and it's a really, really nice business. And I mean, you get a chance to help a lot of people, um, help a lot of families and you get compensated nicely for it as well. So um, it's a win-win for everybody. So um, I've okay, had just, just three quick tips, um, you know, that I kind of thought of right off the top of my head for them um, that I was going to be able to, you know, that I felt would help them out to kind of get them started. Um, obviously, it runs a little bit deeper. Uh, at the end of the day, it really is hard work, So, uh, but it always pays off. So the three tips, I'll get into it so I can go ahead and get it out there for you guys and get it going. I know y'all got some things to do today, got some money to make, all that kind of good stuff. Got some family to chill with. So we'll drop these little three three little nuggets real, right here real quick. Um, if you have any thoughts on these, any any other nuggets to drop, please drop it in the comments below. Um, you know, let's let's start a, a conversation. Now, my 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 Caucasian counterparts, feel free. I mean, you know, you want to drop some nuggets, or you know, you just kind of want to get in on the on the discussion, feel free to you know put put your put your two cents in. Um, all of my African American brethren sisters, you know, definitely let this be a forum. You know, put put your experience in as an African American agent. If you're in the South, in the North is a completely different ball game. Down here, we deal with different things. I promise you. I'm, I'm gonna put a, a a picture that I took of one of the clients that I went to go sit that I went uh, to go see. Uh, I'm gonna put a a photo. I took a photo of the front of his house because it's 2019. Yet he has more Confederate flags around his house. <laughs> I mean, he has it on his house. On a, on a pole in his in his front yard he even has one has a, a confederate flag pole on his on his pickup truck so he said you're gonna know how i feel when you at my house or even you or when you're out seeing me you're gonna know exactly how i feel so hey i feel you that's you know personal hey hey that's how you feel man it is what it is everybody entitled to their own opinion so it just is what it is all right so back to it three tips first tip ask now, I don't know if this is a quote that you guys have heard before. Now, so I'm not saying who made this quote. I just heard my brother say it first. So, I mean, unless somebody else come forward and say that they said it first, I heard it first from him. So what he, uh, how he said it was, you know, you can't ask a fish how to fly. Let that sink for one second. You can't ask a fish how to fly. Now, what does that mean? That means you, if you want to learn how to do something, you have to ask the person that's doing it. Now, if I want to learn how to swim, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You go to the fish, but if you're trying to learn how to fly, you got to go to the bird. 
that's the one that, that's going to teach you how to fly, right? So basically, I say that to say, you know, if you're one that like to do a lot of research, um, you know, and kind of like get better by like, you know, researching online and, um, you know, self-help books and things of that nature. I love doing that stuff as well. I love, I love knowledge. But the one thing that you can't do as an African-American agent is you can't learn everything that you're going to do from, from a white agent. Now, some of you going to say, oh, no, you can't. No, you cannot. Some things, cause I and I have learned some things, but you can't learn everything from them. Why? Because the fact that they can do certain things that you can't do, they can go certain places that you can't go. Um, they're they're viewed a certain type of way, or they aren't viewed a certain type of way. Um, now I can, and I'm gonna drop personal stories for you. I got one. I got one story. I mean, I went out there because you know one of the methods or whatever you know one of the tactics that they teach you is what door knocking. Everyone in the in the insurance industry has heard of door knocking, right? Jimmy can go door knock anywhere. Me, me, this this darkness. Yeah, I'm dark underneath my chin too. Dark everywhere. Dark everywhere. <laughs> I'm surprised my tongue ain't purple like a like a chow chow. You know, like I'm just dark. <laughs> you know, so. I had a, uh, I went to a gentleman's house. I'm just going to door knock it. I get there. I knock. Dude, 84 years old, white gentleman, says to me, wow, I don't ever get anyone that looks like you around here. Now, I'm perfect that and say this. His last name was Color. I'm not going to spell it because I want you to, well, I guess it really wouldn't matter because it's, it's several people in the world with that with that name. But it's, it's C-U-L-L-E-R, Color. He makes the joke to me. <laughs> yeah, you know, my uh, wife and I, yeah, <laughs> we we uh, joke all the time. <laughs> We're the most colored people that we know. Stop and think for me. We're the most colored people that we know. First of all, it's 2019. He's still using the word colored. Segregation is only what 55, 60 something year. Desegregation is only what 55, 60 years years old. This man's 80, 84 years old. He's he's used to me going to the back door to get my meals. That's what he's used to. So now this is something that you can't learn from a from a white agent because a white agent doesn't have this problem. A white agent, if a white agent goes to a house that has multiple Confederate flags waving everywhere, it's, it's not a concern to him. He doesn't have to think about what the mentality of the person that's on the other side of that door, what they think. Ne never crosses his mind. Now that that white agent, he get first the first thing he gonna say is, "I'm not. I'm, I mean, I'm not racist. You know, I I, I love everyone." And that could definitely be true. But here's the thing. You can fake the funk all day and, and you will get that sale in that house. You will help that family. You'll, you'll, like, you'll write that insurance policy. He doesn't want to deal with me. He doesn't want to deal with someone of, of my skin complexion. Everything I tell him, he wants to double check, fact check it. Go go down the street, talk to his buddy about it. But if it was white agent, oh, he's taking it at, at face value. Not every time, most times. So that's that's door knocking. Now they're gonna tell you when you get inside of this home to be extra aggressive. Never take the first no. Never take the first no. You gotta be passionate. You gotta be passionate. If a white guy goes into that house and, and he's not taking no for an answer, and he's trying to explain to you why this is something that you need, everyone views him as being passionate. I go in there, I'm dark. I do the same thing, I'm aggressive. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Now I don't twist anyone's hand. Hey, life insurance is something that you need. If you don't want it, hey, that's 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 totally fine. Anybody that says that they don't care about having life insurance, anytime anyone tells me they don't care about having life insurance, they've just never had anyone die and, and they need life insurance. It's the only way. If you ran across anybody that has died, that has had a family member die in their family that did not have insurance. You know, because everybody passed the hat around. How, 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 how many dollars do you have? How many how, how many dollars do you have? A couple dollars. 
And then, you know, the next thing you know, everybody throwing up little 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 GoFundMe little things to try to get somebody buried. It happens. It happens all the time. It, while are we talking today? Somebody setting up that little that little GoFundMe. It happens. So that's number one. Asking a fish how to fly. Or getting the experience of, of other black brokers that can, you know, speak to the experiences that, that they have had working within this industry in the South, being black, where, you know, everyone is not everyone is not created equal. Everybody doesn't view doesn't think that everyone is equal down in the, in these parts. Okay, so number two, target correct market. So basically this is where I'm gonna now show you the picture that I was talking about how the guy had multiple racist flags racist flags confederate flags some people say oh no it's it's southern pride I get it but the only thing that changed after the civil war was the fact that you could no longer own slaves so so you're fighting what for the right to be able to do that again nothing else changed they just said no like stop like stop stop enslaving those people and y'all mad still to this day Still trying to still trying to figure out like how we can get that back. That's just gone. They're doing it in, in other ways now. It's glass ceilings, corporate America bullshit, all that different kind of stuff. Sorry, sorry for the cursing and all that. So target the correct market area. Back to it. Sorry, I be going off and I be trying to come back. Put down in the comment, lemon. Stay up, stay your ass on track. All right, my bad. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> all right. So target correct market. So basically, like know where the people who you want to deal with are. The like-minded people, the people that, that are open to all to doing business with all races. Some people just aren't open to doing business with you. And, and people be like, oh no, like that's not the case. That's not the case. Yes, that's the case. Now, before I got into insurance, um, I was a I worked in car sales. I sold luxury vehicles, luxury high-end vehicles, Lexus, Toyota. I started at Infinity, so I have a fun, fun love for Infinities. Holler at me if you like the infinities. I know I'm gonna work there, but I'll get you a referral real nicely. <laughs> but um, yeah, so um, you know, I've been in the corporate world and I see how it works. I've had people, I've had people come in into the showroom, white couples, come into the showroom. Now, like I said, I'm in North Carolina. Now, so if you live up in New York or Jersey and you've never had that happen, yeah, it's a completely different climate in those areas. But down here where I am, I've had them come in and then not shake my hand. Yeah, like straight up, like, like I put my hand out there, and they just not shake it. Now, le now one time the old lady, she at least tried to lie to me. Oh, I have a cold and I don't want to spread germs, lady. I, ain't, I haven't heard you cough, sneeze, sniffle, or, or, or snort not one time. I don't see no Kleenexes in your hand. You, you you don't look sick. Your eyes ain't watering. But okay, we'll uh go with that one. <laughs> The other lady, she just flat out looked at my hand and then just started walking towards the showroom. I said, damn, I guess we're doing it like that. Now, I sold the car. After I went and got the white manager to come and, you know, kind of like work with me with her. Because she didn't just, she didn't want to deal with me. Someone that looks like me. I get it. It is what it is. So, you got to target the right areas. Do research. Um, you know, Find out where the where the where the large minority populations are because they need insurance. And here's the thing: those minority sectors sections, white agents avoid those areas. They do. They they go to no no no. We see everybody. Bullshit. They avoid those areas. So those areas need agents to come see them. Find out where those areas are. Market to those areas. Facebook marketing, direct mail marketing. Um, I really suggest direct mail marketing. Facebook marketing is, is good as well, but direct mail, it's that extra step that they, you know, hand filled out the form. They stuck it back in the mail. So it's like they took an extra step. So you know that they're like really interested customers or interested in, you know, wanting to get covered. Um, so find the right uh, areas. You know, you can go online. Um, you know, they have breakdowns of demographics by race and by county. Uh, by city, things of that nature. You kind of target target the more diverse areas. You know, those are going to be the areas in, in where you can do really good. Target the diverse areas. All right, and we're at about 14 some minutes. So the last one here, number three, uh, just kind of let you know, you're going to have to work three times as hard um, as, as your white counterparts. It's just how it works. It's just how it works. Um, 
And people are, no, 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 is that not really that? Okay, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, look, let me just break down the numbers for you, and then you'll kind of understand what I'm saying. Okay, so let's say I, me, as me, I purchased 20 leads for this area. My white counterpart purchases 20 leads from this area. If, if out of our both 20, we both get five racist individuals by super duper, like, I, I hate black people types. We have those down here. Like I said, if you live in another area, you may not have that same problem. We have that problem down here. So out of out of my 20, five of them won't even take the time of day to even talk to me. Now, he has those same five racist people, but he's white. So they will deal with him and only him. So even if we both are like just as great and, and out of all, let's say, I mean, and no one sells every single one of the leads that they get, but let's say that both of us was, both of us were so nice that we each sold every lead that we ever got. Well, five of mine are canceled out because they won't deal with a black person. The, he, he still has those same five. So he just hit 20 home runs. I hit 15 home runs. Now, if you keep on doing this month after month after month, five times, if the, if that happens once a month, that's 60 extra deals that he got done throughout the course of a year that I didn't, based off of something that neither one of us could control. Right? It's crazy. That's how it works. So you just have to just realize that that's how it's going to be and just be ready to work twice as hard. Three times as hard is what I think I said. <laughs> Three times is hard. But it's worth it, though. Why is it worth it? Because in the end, you're going to get financial freedom. You know, the reason why I had to get out of corporate America, there's no way in the world, like, I don't understand. Like, I can't, like, I, I am asking for permission to enjoy life. What do you mean by that? I, I mean, if I want to go to the beach, I got to take time off work. Oh, I'm out of vacation days. I can't go. Damn. I'm working overtime. I and I I'm gonna reflect. I got I had one corporate story that really stood out to me. I've been I've been in the corporate in several, several companies, but one stood out to me in particular. Um I was working with the staffing company and you know I'm there, you know, work is done. Um I'm there, I'm working late, I'm staying late trying to fill these, fill these as they call them wrecks or these positions that we had that we needed to get filled. And I look out of the window, and here is the owner of this company throwing beach balls, beach towels, coolers, all into his SUV, and he's headed to the beach. And it, that struck me because I was like, wow, like, this is his dream. I'm working on his dream while he's at the beach chilling. I, I'm not with my family chilling. I'm here working overtime. He's chilling. This is his dream. This ain't my dream. This just means for money to me. So, you know, the financial freedom, the 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 freedom to live life, also the security, you know, I mean, with a job, they can let you go at, at any point. They can let you go at any point. So, you know, when you get, you know, into your own deal where, you know, you're, you're handling your own business, you're doing your own deals, like you just, that, there's a level of independence that comes with that, that you just can't beat. And then legacy. That's another thing. You build something that you could then pass down. Like this insurance thing, this agency thing, like this can be passed down. The only thing that I do, I don't have children yet. But if I have a son or a daughter, when they get 18, they're getting their, their, their life insurance license and their health insurance license. Yeah. All this is yours. You have all this. Because that's how our white counterparts do. That's how they do. They pass stuff down. They kids don't have to. They don't have to struggle. They don't have to work. They, I mean, they do work, but they don't have to go crazy working. But that's for a whole another. That's for a whole another story. Because my story is really, really interesting. So I'm from the the country, country, country. I'm talking about like, like red clay, barefooted outside all day, country, country, right? So, like raising hogs, watermelon, goats. We did all that. Then in, and so and I was there from kindergarten to sixth grade. Well, seventh grade, I went to the most prestigious private school in in the city that I lived in. 
Like, this is why the doctors and lawyers' kids went, right? So, I'm from an area where, you know, basically, I grew up on a well. These kids, like, in a, in a single wide home. Well, these, these kids, like, their bedrooms are bigger than my entire house was. Their bedrooms. Bigger than my whole house. Now, my house wasn't that big. My size grew up in a single wide trailer. But they but they room was bigger than a single wide trailer. <laughs> So, but, you know, that's, like I said, that's for another day. I told y'all I'd get off on my tangents, but y'all just have to bring me back to the topic. But I got it right here. So, couple tips for you black insurance brokers, life insurance agents, health insurance agents, whatever type, whatever type, whatever type. I'm just saying, like, that's what I do. Life, and I do health insurance, mainly life insurance. So, three tips for your black life insurance broker are going to be ask a fish how to swim. Don't ask a fish how to fly. What do I mean by that? That means yes, like look to your white counterparts for great sales tips and different things of that of that nature. But how to navigate the life insurance industry as a black male or female, you need to ask another black person because they're gonna be they're gonna be situations that they had to navigate through, the waters that they had to wade through, that the white counterpart is just never gonna have to know how to handle. And just like like the lady who recruited me in or, you know, that like gave me the opportunity to come in with the company. She's a white lady. I haven't even told her the story about the about the Confederate flag thing. What's she going to tell me? There's nothing that she can tell me. She's never experienced it. She don't know what to do with it. Now, the only thing that could kind of get kind of get close is if she was a Jewish, if she was of Jewish descent and the house instead of Confederate flags had swastika flags all over it, then she could kind of cl get closer to understanding it a little bit. But as it stands right now, she can't understand it. So that's not a, a, a topic that I have even brought to her. And really the topic I'm bringing to, to, to YouTube. Has anybody else had any of this happen? How'd you, how'd you, how'd you, how'd you deal with it? Thoughts, comments, you know. I mean, let's uh, get the conversation going because I don't it's not that many black brokers that are really, really successful out here. I've heard of some and I know a couple of them. They up in the like Detroit area, Michigan area, New Jersey area, Cali. They're doing their things. But it's hard for us down here in the in this Bible Belt South. I promise you. <laughs> but we gonna rise. And I'm going to I plan on being one of the people at the forefront of that of that uprising. So let's get it going. Let's get the discussion going. And uh, man, let's let's uh, help each other out. And uh, other than that, man, y'all get to it and have a good day, and let's make this money.